Hi, in this video we're going to do a couple of examples from Module 1, Section 1. We're going to start with a periodic accumulation factor example and then kind of twist it around and do a periodic discount factor problem. So let's get right to it. Uh, here's the example I want to start with. Uh, it says at time 0, 100 is deposited into an interest-bearing account. At time 5, the deposit has grown to 240 and at time 7, the deposit has grown to 300. Uh, if an additional amount of 100 was deposited at time 5, then the question is, how much would have been in the account at time 7? So let's start with the first two sentences, that at time 0, we had 100 deposited into the account, and it has grown to 240 at time 5 and to 300 at time 7. So let's capture that information in a, in a timeline. So this timeline would, would capture that. And now let's move on to the, the, the last sentence which was where the question is, and that is if an additional amount of 100 was deposited into the account at time 5, how much would have been in the account at time 7? So let's capture that information in our timeline also. We'll do that by putting an extra 100 on top of the 240 at time 5. So now the question is, then what does that 100 accumulate to? How much does that 100 accumulate to? If I denote that by cap Y, then of course my answer to the question, well, how much will be in the account at time 7, my answer would be 300 plus cap Y. Okay, so now in order to uh, determine the value of cap Y, let's focus our attention on the part of the timeline where the 240 at time 5 accumulates to the, to the 300 at time 7. So that's the part of the timeline I want to focus on because from that information we know from the learning video that I can relate the two values, the 300 and the 240, by saying the 240 times the periodic accumulation factor from time 5 to time 7 would be 300 and solving for this periodic accumulation factor from time 5 to time 7 just by dividing by 240 we get a 1.25 as that factor. Now going back to our original timeline then I can now determine the value of cap Y because I've got that the periodic accumulation factor from time 5 to time 7 is 1.25. In other words, the cap Y value would be 100 accumulated from time 5 to time 7, so I multiply by that periodic accumulation factor from time 5 to time 7, and I get a value of cap Y equal to 125, which then gives me an answer of 425 as how much money is actually in the account at time 7. Okay, so now that was a problem with a periodic accumulation factor, so let's kind of twist this problem around and talk about a periodic discount factor problem. So let's set it up the same way. Uh, the first two sentences are going to be the same. So at time 0, 100 is deposited into this interest-bearing account. And then at time 5, that 100 has grown to 240. And at time 7, it has grown to 300. So once again, I start off with the same, the same timeline uh, as before. Now, let's look at the rest of the problem. If an additional amount, cap X, was deposited into the account at time 5, then there would have been 1,050 in the account at time 7. We want to determine what the cap X value is. How much was deposited at time 5? So there's our, our timeline now, such that there was 1,050 at time 7. Now look, if there was 1,050 at time 7, uh, there's already 300 in that account from, that, from the accumulation of the, of the initial 100. And so the amount that cap X must have accumulated to would have been 1,050 minus 300, which of course is 750. And so the answer to the question, well, what's the, what's the amount cap X? Well, then cap X is just 750 discounted back from time 7 back to time 5. So that's 750 times the periodic discount factor from time 7 to time 5. Once again, I would proceed as I did before. I'm going to focus on the part of the timeline where the 240 accumulates to 300 from time 5 to time 7. Exactly as I did before, you could solve it the same way uh, or, or create an equation the same way. Uh, we get that the periodic accumulation factor from time 5 to time 7 is 1.25 as before. And that relates because we know from the learning video from this section that the periodic discount factor from time 7 back to time 5 is the reciprocal of the periodic accumulation factor from time 5 to time 7. And so I get that the periodic discount factor then from time 7 back to time 5 is 0 0.8. 
and that help, that gives me the that that allows me to calculate the answer then because cap x is the discounted value of the 750 from time seven back to time five, and I get that cap x value by multiplying that 750 times the, the, the periodic discount factor from time seven to time five. In other words, the cap x value is 600. Okay, so that was a couple of quick examples, one on uh, periodic accumulation factors and one on periodic discount factors. Uh, if you didn't understand those, I encourage you to go back and look at um, the learning video. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.